like five seconds. And have it guess masks. Stop. We don't need masks. These are all independent of what's on it. We're not stepping on it. This is what we're showing. We're not writing this thing. Oh, yeah. No. What you see is what you We have video of us writing it. That's all we need. Is that the murder superpower? No, not the murder. We're with Captain Cat. They're not even getting close to them. I'm going to level it out. Actually, the code can't physically e execute oh, yeah, faster than, yeah, right. than 12 milliseconds. So why not drop it down to 12? Because you need to wait for the Bluetooth. Like that. <laughs> You're right. It does, it's nice when, it's, when it doesn't bottom out, but the minute it hits that ground, it's Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. That is really good. Until it runs into a toolbox. Oh. And then it just then it just wants to beat up the toolbox. <laughs> it just has a fit. Did not care for the good start. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do doesn't destroy humans, I think I'm okay. Yeah. It has little fits. This is with the time not loop. 
This is our, this is, this is our, this is the one that we have a video of. It has a bottom mount issue. When it hits the bottom, it um, crashes because it's trying to crash. Go. Yes. Hence, why a course in Leary controls is important. <laughs> <laughs> And we have the Teflon stoppers on it, set it up to yeah. keep it from getting beat up. Good start, please. It's hold it here first. Yes. It starts thrashing about it as it should correct itself. And also, if with a person on it, some coding adjustment has to be done to mm -hmm. account for a, the weight of a person than when someone's not on the platform itself. But the way you use it is not meant to be driven by this. It's supposed to be somebody on it, right? Well, that's the idea. Right. So, you want it to stack the balance? Just yeah, like yeah just don't, don't steer it. Just let it I'm not. So it's moving on to the platform. It's all yeah. moving on to the platform. Yeah. Can't really control the first track. It might yeah. break something though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's why he's steering it around to keep it from There's drinking. There's a lot of LEDs over there. <laughs> Drifting into someone oh else's project. The other problem is every time you slam it, is that IMU secure? We take that um, thing down as There is a good. piece of foam to help absorb any potential shock. Yeah. It's uh, it does suffer from shock, so that that is an issue. We yeah. tried the spring suggestion, but uh yeah, kind of rebound. Yeah, yeah. The springs actually made it catch air. Oh, that's why the wire. <laughs> <laughs> it went. It all eat itself. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, they the springs actually broke off too. Twice. Twice. Okay. So it's barely totally a bad off. idea. It's all that bad. We good I, good yeah. idea, but uh, <laughs> guess. Save the door. Yeah. Sorry. Put the experiences trauma on IMU, so that's a bad thing. So all the PID coefficients were all empirically determined. Try this, uh, that didn't work, try yeah. that. Yeah, we have no automated system. You didn't use MATLAB. No, no, unfortunately, on, I did some research with the software. Uh, the software has predetermined uh, applications that you can use. <laughs> Something was to come. Uh, <laughs> And there, uh, maybe I wasn't yeah. familiar with the proper wording or definitions, but there wasn't anything for any type of self-balance or self-sufficient uh, PID uh, simulation that I could find. Yeah, it was normally, typically you use MATLAB to simulate your uh, loop response. But, uh, but whatever. No. <laughs> The way we did it is we would knock um, one or two of the coefficients down to completely zero yeah, and then work from the ground up trying to find a good value that would react well. And then we'd incorporate, you know, the second one and the third one after we do that way and see how everything worked together. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. Here, let me uh, power it off first. Actually, it hasn't happened. 
This is definitely yeah, first. Oh, okay. Yeah, when I was writing it, the chain came out. Yeah. These are the two motors. These are the two tenders of what motors as. And these are the rear wheel assemblies. As you've seen, um, they are pretty nasty motors when decided to have a fit. Uh, they do carry a lot of power. These are currently at a reduced gain from what we originally had. Oh, them. we're running them at about 40% maximum capacity. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really happy. I was afraid that uh, one of the chains might break in the beginning when we were running it at uh, full. Yeah. We haven't had a chain break issue. That thing came off, though. Uh, uh, to get the chain back on, we'd have to um, unmount the motor. These are the standard rear wheel assemblies for a Razor E100 uh, scooter, a rubber composite. OK, any, other, any questions? OK. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, Dr. Richards. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.